Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm uh, Filippo Giunchedi. I work as an operations engineer for the Wikimedia Foundation. And this talk will be about how we are deploying Prometheus and what the road we took to uh, fully deploy it to, pr to production. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today, if this thing works, uh, a little bit of introduction and, well, to set the stage, and then what we have and what we need for, for Prometheus for a monitoring system in general. Uh, why Prometheus? Why it was the, our choice? Why not any other open source uh, time series database out there? Um, how, what's the shape of Pr uh, Prometheus in production? What, how it works, basically. Um, and finally, what Prometheus eventually does and will do for us uh, in production. So, well, uh, first, first a little bit of uh, introduction. Uh, the slide says uh, Wikimedia Foundation, but uh, Wikipedia, Wikimedia, what's, what's the relationship? Why the confusion? Well, uh, Wikimedia Foundation is the, organi the non-profit organization that oversees and helps grow the project of the Wikimedia Foundation, the Wikimedia movement. And among these projects is Wikipedia, which is certainly the most common and most known, the English Wikipedia. Uh, so, Wikipedia and the sister project did uh, 16 billion page view a month with uh, 13,000 new editors a month. So that's quite a, a large project. And I'm sure uh, everybody in this room has used Wikipedia at least once. Uh, well, across all projects, it, we have uh, 41 million articles at the moment and 34 million multimedia files. And remember that uh, all this content is uh, freely available for everyone to consult, to change, and to share. You can find more data uh, about, about what I just talked about uh, in the report card. Uh, of course, one of the values is uh, sharing and having, uh, giving every human being uh, free access to knowledge. So one of the core values of the foundation is to share data and being as open as possible. So uh, all the, the development and the uh, processes and decisions are, take, are taken in the, in the open. What the, well, how does this actually, this thing actually works? Uh, well, we have at the moment four sites, uh, two data centers, two main data centers, both in the US, and two caching pops. Uh, what are caching pops? Is, it, well, what, who knows what a caching pop is? Raise your hands, please. Okay, some of you. Uh, is a small data center, you can think about it, uh, where we place computers around the world to uh, lower the latency for users. And the monitor is one in the west coast of the US and one in Amsterdam. We have about uh, 1,400 bare metal machines, which uh, we operate ourselves, including data centers. It's, all, it's fully uh, operated in-house for, uh, well, to keep independence, mostly. And uh, at peak, we're doing uh, 120K, 125K requests a second, uh, all HTTPS. Uh, some time ago, we switched all traffic, all user and traffic to HTTPS. That was quite an uh, interesting project as well. And uh, we're pushing 32 gigabytes at peak outbound to clients. And as you can imagine, that's mostly multimedia content. This is what I, I just talked about. Talked about. You see, the, you don't have to memorize these pictures, but uh, you see, ECAD and CoFW uh, are the two main data centers, which, uh, and then US4 and ESMs are the two caching pops. With uh, actually one uh, in Asia uh, will be coming online in the next two quarters. So how uh, the landscape looked like, monitoring landscape at the WMF. Well, it, it's sort of the standard uh, monitoring, uh, open source monitoring uh, stack with um, storing time series, time series database uh, and visualizing, say for example, by Ganglia. I don't want to, do, to go through the list. Some of these tools are very well known, uh, some of less, uh, anyway. Uh, all, over time, what, what, what has happened is that we've been adding monitoring tools, but we have been removing none. So this is all technical debt that I kept accumulating. 
So what we needed uh, was something that was powerful enough for our needs to uh, remove some of these tools and give some, something, uh, something more as well. So, enter Prometheus. Um, why? Why we choose uh, Prometheus? Well, one of the most important things uh, that Prometheus has given us is the power of querying data and extracting, well, basically asking a useful question about all the data that we had. Uh, how many of you know what Prometheus is? Okay, a good chunk. Excellent. <laughs> um, so, basically, the idea is that when you get data in Prometheus, uh, you can query it and slice and dice the data as you, as you want. We'll see more, more about this later. Um, Prometheus is a toolkit. So the idea would be that uh, other teams outside, for example, operation, and operations itself, uh, can use Prometheus to answer their questions. So we have, being the operations team, uh, operational needs, say, for example, bandwidth or request errors and so on but other teams at the foundation might have different needs that also require time-series data uh, Well, yes, so sort of, sort of related to this, the multi-tenancy. Uh, this is a separate point because from an operational perspective, uh, we are deploying multiple uh, Prometheus servers, uh, each independent of each other, say for example for team. Uh, it's been very reliable. Uh, unlike some other uh, monitoring system that, that we had. Uh, and for example, in, in production, I don't think we had a single crash. And of course, that's uh, very important because the obvious but true of observation is that a monitoring system should be more reliable than the system it's monitoring. Otherwise, it's basically useful, useless. Um, efficient resource, resource usage. Uh, Prometheus has been very uh, efficient in utilizing, for example, uh, CPU, uh, bandwidth and more, more importantly uh, d disk for storing uh, time series. And uh, the metric flow is also easy to understand and debug. Basically uh, this, both the uh, read path and the write path inside and outside Prometheus are HTTP based. As you have seen a few slides ago, we do quite a few HTTP requests a second. So it's a protocol that we know and encourage more more services to use, as, as many services as possible. Um, so what we did before production, I, well, doing, uh, doing due diligence, I don't want to deploy this thing to production, turn it on and say to the team, well, okay, this is the new system monitoring and use it. So what we did, uh, Wikimedia also operates a visual, virtualized environment, the WMF lab, so you can say, uh, internal cloud, uh, even though it's uh, uh, open to everybody. And the, this cloud is used, for example, uh, by the community to operate the, the software that they've wrote and operate on Wikipedia data. So you might not know this, but the Wikipedia is also edited automatically by bots, for example, uh, to do counter vandalism uh, actions. So if a, edit, a spam edit is detected, it will be automatically reverted by by a bot. And these things uh, all run into the virtualized environment. Um, and also, of course, it's a, pr a playground for us uh, to, before going to production. So we strive for this environment to be as close to production. Uh, the only difference being that the resources av available are uh, less and uh, the traffic is less and so on. But for all intent and purposes, sh it should be equal to production. So what we did is use uh, this, uh, this playground to validate so Prometheus. So the point being that if it works in the virtualized environment on spinning disks with very limited resources on a VM, it will run fine in production. And that, that's actually been the case. So you can see uh, what's been going on. Uh, what we did uh, in public, publicly available uh, interfaces, those are two instances of uh, Prometheus that are available for, for everyone in, everyone to, to see and, and look at. Uh, finally, also, uh, the Grafana for, for labs is also available. So uh, this is what, what it looks like. Well, this is the standard Prometheus interface, as you can see, it's exposed uh, on the web. And those are the uh, 
endpoints, for example, for ATCD, again, is used as a, as a playground for, for production. We, we run also run ATCD in production. So how does it look like uh, for a single site? You remember the data centers that I talked about? Uh, well, there is uh, one or more, more, one, more than one uh, bare metal machines running in production, running permits in production, and multiple uh, permitted servers instance in, uh, per machine. And again, this has to do with the multi-tenancy point. So multiple uh, teams can have uh, the same, their own Prometheus server running on the same machine. Uh, for uh, high availability, what we do is deploy uh, identical machines and uh, put them behind a load balancer with uh, LVS and direct uh, routing. I, I won't go into the details, but uh, this is the exact same stack that runs our production uh, traffic. So it's basically, it uses the same load balancer infrastructure as the, as the main website. Uh, on each uh, machine also we run uh, Nginx for uh, access control, uh, authentication and things like that as a reverse proxy for, for Prometheus. And the configuration uh, happens through Puppet. It deploys a certain set of conf static configuration for Prometheus. Uh, plus uh, auto-generated YAML files. So service discovery happens uh, by uh, Puppet writing YAML files, which then are picked up by Prometheus. This uh, has been working well for us because most of our metadata is in Puppet. So Puppet knows uh, most, uh, basically everything about the, about the infrastructure. Uh, you can find uh, the GOR details in our um, Puppet repo, which again is public. Uh, we use Garrett, but it's also mirrored uh, on GitHub. Uh, again, it's all free and publicly licensed to, for everyone to look at, both good and bad things. Um, again, and also the, that is our uh, instance for uh, our documentation for the technical part of Wikimedia. And that is the uh, page for Prometheus. It has more details about uh, what's going on, what will happen, and so on. Then, uh, do you remember the picture from the beginning? There is one site, but then uh, we have uh, multiple sites. So how do we get a global picture of what's going on every, across the infrastructure? Well, we, we use a, a feature from Prometheus called uh, Federation. So the idea is that we run yet another uh, instance of Prometheus polling data from the site local uh, Prometheus servers. This way, uh, you can get basically a global overview across all data centers of what's going on, say how much bandwidth they're using, how much memory, and so on. Uh, and then uh, once you've, say for example, identified that there is a problem, you can drill down into the site-specific uh, Prometheus instance. And this also, uh, I, they have, for example, different retention periods. So the site local, might have uh, a month or two months and so on, depending on uh, how much disk space you have. Whereas the uh, global instance, uh, they have less metric. They scrape a uh, selected uh, few metrics from the, all the sites uh, and therefore can store uh, data for longer, say one year and so on. So this is how it looks like uh, in production, one of the dashboards for, uh, for Grafana. And for example, uh, you can see on the left, those are the four sites with all the uh, network and load and memory used. And then for each of those sites, you have multiple uh, clusters. Say for example, I'm not sure if you can read it, but uh, there is um, Elasticsearch uh, or the app servers or memcache. So you have a breakdown of every, every cluster, how it's doing, and its, its current status. So this is proven very useful uh, with respect. Ganglia gave us something like this, but not quite, and we'll see, we'll see more about that. Um, one of the first uh, use cases that we had in production was actually, for Prometheus, was actually database monitoring. And we have 180 uh, database machines running uh, MySQL, well, specifically uh, MariaDB 10, 10.0. 10 
with uh, seven main clusters that uh, have the uh, content for uh, the wikis. Not really, but almost. Uh, with 21 clusters total. Uh, again, this was the very important uh, use case for Prometheus in production because the previous uh, tool that we still have in production is called Tendril, and for privacy reasons, it's not available publicly, and it's uh, developed in-house. Well, not for privacy reasons, but anyway, it's not, the point being that some, it, it is not available publicly. What Prometheus has allowed us is to open the MySQL data, say, for example, uh, how many queries are being run on, on MySQL uh, for everybody to see. So we have publicly available dashboards for um, MySQL, uh, MySQL data. And, of course, the way we did it is uh, via stock, um, out-of-the-box components, say, for example, uh, MySQL D exporter and Grafana. Um, and this is uh, how it looks like. You can actually uh, look at this dashboard, but don't hit it too hard, please. Uh, and this is uh, uh, the query throughput for MySQL all aggregated. As you can see, even on database, there is quite a few uh, queries going on. And what I was talking about earlier is that this allows us, uh, for example, to drill down uh, on specific well, see, uh, both uh, aggregated view and drill down into a single uh, cluster, into a single shard, uh, saying in case it has problems. The most common one would be, for example, replication lag. And you can, at the top, you can, you can select the shard and the type of database that you want to see. This is not something that the previous tool could do, uh, not as easily and not uh, as, uh, in such a way that, that was easy to visualize, essentially. Uh, the last, uh, but not least, uh, use case that we had for uh, Prometheus was uh, replacing Ganglia, which was one of the tools that we had for a long time has been serving as well. Uh, it's still, it is still there, but deprecated at the moment. And what we use it for is uh, inspect the service cluster health. Say, for example, what I, show you, I showed you uh, on Grafana, we will be doing with Ganglia. Even though the data was somewhat uh, static in there, you couldn't manipulate the, the data that Ganglia uh, gave you. Or you could, but it was very hard to do. So we mostly used it for uh, machine level metrics, say CPU, network, uh, all the, the information that the kernel gives you, essentially. Uh, and also somewhat uh, service level. Service <coughs> metrics, say for example, uh, varnish and so on. But so, again, it was easy to see uh, individual machine metrics for ganglia, sorry, for varnish, but not in aggregated fashion and drill down into metrics and so on. So, what we had to do is uh, audit all the pl custom plugins for ganglia that we developed over time and see how we could replace them uh, with Prometheus components. Again, gory details. Th that is um, our fabricator instance where we track issues. So you can look at it um, at the task relevant for, for this work. <laughs> Exabyte. This is a screenshot uh, I took the other day from Ganglia. Uh, it seems fine. That is the aggregated view of all the clusters, as I uh, showed you before. But if you notice, the uh, uh, network shows, well, not really. But uh, those are exabytes a second, according to Ganglia. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, we, 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 will, uh, we will be having a different conversation if that was the truth. Um, so that is the kind of problem that um, we were facing. So the tool was uh, OK on a basic level for everyday use, but it was sort of broken, not broken, unmaintained, and so on. And of course, uh, if you can't trust the data that you're getting out of the monitoring, that is basically useless. So what we did um, to fully part all the ganglia metrics into Prometheus? Well, the usual case is you, you take a ganglia plugin that is, that is exporting some metrics and replace it with a Prometheus exporter. All the, the export does its job is to convert the 
metrics that it is getting from a service into a format that Prometheus understands. The, there's usually two cases. The epic case is that the exporter is already packaged in Debian, so apt install, we run uh, Debian across the fleet with some Ubuntu mixed in, but that's on, it, on its way out. Um, so apt install, have Puppet do it, minimal configuration, and that's it. The is less epic epiques or un um, is we have to write and package the exporter for Debian. And that is what we did for uh, HHVM, for example. So what we did is use the Prometheus Python client to pull metrics for HHVM on a single machine, the JSON mangle it into a, a, a format that Prometheus understands and export it via HTTP. Usually for each exporter, there is minimal configuration that's uh, applied by Puppet, typically uh, instructing the exporter where to pull the metrics from. Say, for example, um, HHVM has a local interface that exports JSON, so point the exporter to that, and that's basically open a hole in the firewall, that's it. Uh, plus, tell uh, Prometheus about, about this thing. So, how, say, you can tell Prometheus, well, there is uh, such and such HHVM exporters, pull it from these machines. Pull data from the machine. And uh, build, the, uh, of course, the Grafana dashboards. As you can imagine, the most intensive part of this is building the uh, Grafana dashboards because they're hand curated by humans, of course. Um, and write and package the exporter if it's not that. Because, of course, it's code that we have to maintain to test and so on. So I want to talk about uh, a little bit uh, about the future of Prometheus. And what we would like to do is uh, onboard more teams. So for example, at the moment, it is only uh, operations that, that's using uh, Prometheus, even though uh, other teams have shown interest. Because again, uh, the operations team experience has been very good with it. Uh, we would like to instrument our services natively because right now uh, we're using, for, for the majority of services, uh, StatsD, so we'd like to integrate native Prometheus uh, support for it. And we also, we will be running a Kubernetes cluster, uh, and Prometheus has uh, native support for, for Kubernetes, so that will be one of the use cases uh, for monitoring Kubernetes in production. Uh, of course, we will be adding more and more exporters, more data into Prometheus. Uh, for example, uh, we run quite a few, um, for better or worse, JVMs in production. Uh, for example, Cassandra or Elasticsearch. Uh, so there is a way to export data uh, for running JVMs. Uh, and, well, of course, also um, alerting. That, that's been a, a use case we haven't tackled yet. We've concentrating on uh, the, basically the, the monitoring side of it. We're not running any alerting yet on Prometheus, but we will soon. And last but not least is uh, retired graphite. At the moment, we have a, 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 gra a graphite stack running on four machines, which, as a matter of fact, uh, Friday, uh, they run into a problem we burnt out through the SSDs because uh, graphite is not very nice to, uh, to its local storage, so basically the uh, SSD is worn out. So that, that's one, among other things, one of the reasons we would like to, uh, to retire graphite. Well, uh, how, do we, how do we do that? It's a uh, work in progress. It's, it's not easy. Uh, most of the things are uh, still in graphite, so we'll see uh, uh, how, how we, we will be able to do that. I have a few uh, takeaways for you to, to take home or on a plane or whichever. Uh, of course, as you, as you could get, uh, Prometheus has been helping the Wikimedia Foundation monitoring and deploying to production was fun. Uh, it was a well, rocky road as well. It, it's not a straight path, but it was fun nevertheless. And the gains are well worth it. Uh, we are now able to inspect our data and model it to well, what's, hap what's really happening uh, inside the infrastructure. And of course, multidimensional metrics are awesome 
because uh, earlier what we had to do, for example, for varnish uh, metrics is construct very long queries um, from uh, graphite data and hope it, they don't change over time or play with wildcards and hope the uh, naming, naming scheme stays constant and so on. So th this is all I had. If you have any questions. Yes. Uh, One of the earlier slides mentioned the Isinga too. Can you explain the relationship? Yes. Uh, so the question was uh, uh, the question was um, the relationship between uh, Prometheus and Isinga. At the moment, uh, Isinga does for us all the checks. For example, uh, reaching out to the machines, uh, but it, it doesn't know about metrics. Uh, it doesn't know about uh, time series or anything like that. It does check graphite, for example. But um, what we would like to get uh, from Prometheus alerting and deprecating maybe Isinga in the future is uh, run the alert manager for Prometheus in which it will uh, yield more powerful alert alerting. There was a talk two talks ago about uh, alerting in time series. Does, does that answer the question? Um, Any other questions? Uh, about the, the data uh, that you get from uh, Prometheus, do you have already uh, gained some stuff uh, that you cannot uh, get from the other way you are working before? Yes. Uh, so, for example, uh, so the question is, did we get, did we get already more uh, insights into, uh, into the, the data that we are collecting with Prometheus? Yes, for example, uh, you see the, the spikes there in uh, MySQL um, queries. We didn't know about this uh, before. And the reason for that is uh, the, there is a, a job queue running uh, for, from uh, MediaWiki that uh, periodically runs uh, job. And th th this is the effect on databases for, of these jobs. So periodically, I think it's every uh, five minutes, they will go to the, to the database and run queries. So for example, th we didn't know about this earlier. Hey there, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, will you um, send any of the new node exporters upstream? Any of the, the new things you export? Yes, uh, so the question was, will we be sending uh, the new things that we added uh, upstream for exporters? The answer is yes. For example, uh, the HHVM exporter, it's not uh, published yet on the Prometheus website, but we are effectively upstream for it because the, yeah, nobody else wrote it. And maybe in the future, um, uh, HHVM will natively support uh, Prometheus metrics if upstream is, uh, is up with it. And we've been also talking to uh, MySQL, the exporter, upstream about it. Um, I have a question about the data you actually gather. Can you talk about it, how much that is per data center? and how you store this on the local Prometheus hosts? Yes. Um, so the question was, um, can you talk about the data that we collect for each site and how much is it, how it's stored and so on? Uh, so we collect uh, around uh, 15,000, for the main data centers, 15,000 points a second, which is roughly uh, the load that we have on Graphite. So just as a starting point, Prometheus is collecting uh, as much data as graphite at the moment. Uh, again, 15,000 points a second, and those take about uh, 1.3 bytes per point on disk. And the machines that run Prometheus uh, have a mixture of uh, SSDs and spinning disks. So uh, I have a related question. Uh, what is the most used resource? Is it a lot of uh, CPU usage or memory? Disk, obviously. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? What is the most um, intensive use of the resource? Is it CPU usage or memory usage? Uh, so it's, uh, it's a combination of both. Uh, surprisingly enough, uh, for, uh, for us, it was not disk I.O. In fact, uh, Prometheus is very efficient, unlike 
say for example graphite in disk IO because it buffers me data in memory and then streams it to disk. Um, so the main resource uh, problem problems or usage is uh, CPU depending on how many queries for example you're running and memory because uh, at the moment to run a query it has to load all the data in memory. So it, it is essentially bound by how much memory you have. Questions? Is there a reason why you, you choose bare metal servers for, for Prometheus? So the question is, uh, why do we choose uh, bare metal servers uh, for Prometheus? Um, so in uh, the trial that I showed you, it actually started as Ganeti VMs. And we moved to uh, bare metal machines because they offer essentially more performance. Any more? OK, thank you very much for the talk. Um, thank you. I have th th this is the last